I, I want to start off, uh, you put out a pretty uh, comprehensive note just going through some scenarios of what we can expect that could happen. I do want to start with the fact, though, that we're just seeing right now news out of Washington that they've identified uh, Deep Seek as a, it could have national security implications. Can you help us parse that statement and why that might or may not be important and what it could lead to? Yeah, that's a pretty significant statement right off the bat from the administration, just probably a day after the administration learned what the heck uh, Deep Seek is. Um, and it's important because the context is TikTok, and we can talk about that later if you'd like a potential ban of TikTok in the United States. But the fact that you've had administration officials on literally day one of Deep Seek being in the public consciousness, the administration saying this might be something we have to look at to protect U.S. national security, that's, that's kind of a big deal. Um, in particular, because the bill, the legislation, I should say, that gives the president the power to ban TikTok also gives him the power to ban any app from any other country that the president deems to be a national security risk. So that decision to ban any app, potentially like DeepSeek, um, does not need to go through Congress or any committees or any regulators. This is solely the president's decision. So if there's discussion coming out of the White House that already it views DeepSeek as a national security risk, that's meaningful. Let's, let's talk a bit about, I want to come back to that and how it relates to TikTok and, you know, what this means. But you put out a piece I thought was really, really well done, Paul, on just the things that uh, that could happen out of this. And one uh, uh, scenario you talk about is this could be the Sputnik moment for U.S. Internet companies. Uh, maybe, kind of again, tell us what you mean by that and then what could come from that. Sure. So... For the last two and a half years, the U.S. companies, uh, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Meta, have been the, um, the, the, pro the leaders in commercializing generative AI, and everybody fully expected around the world that those companies would be the global leaders in AI. And out of nowhere comes this Chinese company using older chips than what the U.S. companies are using and not having as many software developers are, are came out with a, um, a large language model or a generative AI uh, service that's almost as good as OpenAI, which has gotten all the, the publicity for the past two and a half years. So I think it's really been a wake up call around the country on Wall Street and in Washington. And the kind of things that I could imagine Washington doing, because President Trump said before he even won the election, that if he won, the US is gonna lead the world in AI. And so I don't think he's going to take this deep seek um, notoriety uh, lying down. He's going to do something. And a couple of the things that he could do, number one, he could really be more deregulatory and supportive of the U.S. Internet companies, the ones that are deep seeks biggest competitors. Again, Google, Meta, Amazon and Microsoft and OpenAI and say, look, we're not going to regulate the service at all. In fact, if you need any help from us, tell us what you need. You know, kind of like the way the U.S. you know got a man on the moon 50, 60 years ago. It was you know they, the U.S. suddenly got scared that the Russians were going to get there first. That's kind of my point of saying I can imagine Trump just saying we're going to lead the world in AI no matter what it takes. And to me, that feels good. That feels very good for Google, Meta, Am uh, Apple, Amazon, etc. It's interesting, yeah, you highlight here about you know, the deep seek tailwind, and I think it almost might feel a bit counterintuitive to people when they first hear the news and then realize, oh, this is what the government could do to support and make sure that that, you know, the, 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 to your point, the dominance is, I, I won't say maintained, because clearly something happened, but maybe they can regain it again and keep moving. Yeah, good point. I, I, I give you an example. Uh, right now, for the past several years, the U.S. Department of Justice has been in court against Google to try to uh, prove that they're a monopoly in the search business and to for, and to regulate them as a result. And one of the key things DOJ is asking the judge to do is to try to reduce Google's power in AI by forcing Google to share some of their the crown jewels of their business, which is search data, with their rivals, including Gen AI rivals. And so that is fully aimed at making sure Google does not dominate Gen AI the way it's dominated search. Well, enter enter uh, the deep seek thing yesterday. The White House, I can imagine, is going to be uh, argued by Google to say, look, we don't regulate us, withdraw the lawsuit, soften the remedies or whatever. But if you want the U.S. to lead in AI, it's not going to be by suing one of the best companies who's going to do that.
Yeah, it's, it's a great point. And it just, uh, you know, we saw in the market reaction, I know just like the tendrils of AI have been everywhere in the market, whether it's power, electricity, and we saw, you know, sell-offs right across the board. And so we're just going to have to see what, you know, if there's a Washington policy reaction, maybe we'll see something come back. Or maybe we won't. That's the power of the markets. We'll see how things play out. The second point that you have here in your note is, uh, and you highlighted this already, I think, is that the presidents can ban the app, not just TikTok. And so this national security piece is is pretty important because they can just say, no, you can't. Yeah, you don't really see that too much in Washington. Washington is set up decades ago or centuries ago, I guess, for with, with a lot of checks and balances. So for Congress to give the president the unilateral, uh, durable, forever power to ban any app from any country, China or anywhere else, that he considers to be a national security threat without checking with Congress or whatever is awfully significant. And if the U.S. goes through and bans TikTok like it may, uh, DeepSeek is not nearly as politically difficult to ban because despite what happened in the stock market yesterday as a result of DeepSeek, almost no, no Americans use it or have heard of it, right, compared to TikTok. So if the U.S. can ban TikTok, uh, I would be worried if I'm DeepSeek and I'm seeing the, the White House again on day one saying this is a national security issue. Paul, you talked about how, you know, we could see a lot more support for a lot of the big American tech companies that they rally in Washington, rallies behind them to get them stronger. Uh, you mentioned the president can ban any app just outright, uh, as we're seeing right now what's happening with TikTok, which we'll get to, but also export controls and, and semis and, and, and semi caps. What do you expect or what could we see there? Yeah, unfortunately for the semis and semi-caps, the, the potential impact of DeepSeek's surprising emergence is not good compared to, say, what I think is good for Google, Apple, Meta, whatnot. I think DeepSeek policy-wise is very good for the big internet companies. What I'm concerned about for the chip and tools companies is that it get, the DeepSeek uh, reveal kind of gives ammunition to the China hawks in President Trump's inner circle to say to him, we shouldn't be selling anything to China that lets them catch up to us on AI. And they did use lots of chips from NVIDIA and AMD. And even though they weren't the leading edge chips, they managed to make it work. So let's just not sell them any more chips at all. I don't, to be clear, I don't think that put it, pulling the curtain down and, and completely shutting off the flow is going to happen. But Deep Seek is, is a powerful argument for the hawks that want to restrict more chip and tool sales to China. And, and my concern is that that's something the president can easily wrap his head around and decide that's where he wants to go. That has some serious implications for, I'd say, the chip companies in terms of demand for what they're selling. But also, what about longer term? Wasn't some of what, you know, and again, the, I'll say the lore around Deep Seek, and it's funny how much we're seeing already, is they grew out of a constricted environment. Like, that's part of the reason they could do what they do. So is there something that could get paid for later on if there's a constriction in the short term that, you know, hurts China, but maybe they can grow through it? Yeah, that's the argument in a nutshell of NVIDIA and AMD and the U.S. tools companies is the more that you restrict U.S. chip sales to China, the more you incentivize China to catch up to the U.S. in chip design and chip fabbing. And so it's already kind of happening. China is catching up to us more quickly than we expected. So the argument from NVIDIA and AMD is let us stay at the forefront of chip design and chip development for AI and the only way we can do that is if you let us keep selling some chips to China and we get that revenue to pour it back into R&D. So that's the NVIDIA argument. That's the sort of America first argument, I guess, if you want to put it in Trump's terms, is let, we need Chinese revenue to stay number one in the world in chips. But again, the China hawks around Trump are going to say, they're catching us in AI. Deep Seek is the example. We got to stop selling them everything and just get as far ahead of them as we can on AI. Yeah. Either way, there's a there's a race. It's uh, and that's, that's really clear. It just depends how it plays out. I want to ask though because you know a lot of this kind of builds on some of what happened with TikTok. It's more extreme, I would say. But what what is the latest with TikTok right now? What do you expect to have happen? I think I've seen headlines that uh, President Trump mused that maybe Microsoft could be buying uh, uh, TikTok. It's been an unbelievable roller coaster the last several years. I've been an analyst for 20 years. I've never seen a policy issue, anything like this. Um, so as of January 19th, uh, eight or nine days ago, the president, uh, the statute required that Oracle, Apple, and Google, the infrastructure of TikTok in the U.S., turn TikTok off. 
but they have agreed to keep it going for a short while because President Trump issued an order, an executive order saying, I will not have my Justice Department sue these companies for tens of billions of dollars, even though they're carrying TikTok after January 19, so that I, President Trump, can find a buyer for TikTok, a divested buyer who's an American buyer who's not going to be influenced by uh, the Chinese, basically. So there's about 70 days left uh, for this non-enforcement decision by President Trump to, to run. And as you said, there's been a lot of reports of suitors for TikTok. Um, it's a close call. I think the biggest hurdle uh, for TikTok in the U.S. is getting Congress to pass a bill that more permanently gives TikTok time to be sold and divested. And the biggest objectors to passing that bill are the China hawks in Congress. So Trump, ironically, Trump's biggest challenge in saving TikTok, which he said he would do, and he's really invested his personal reputation in that, is getting his fellow Republicans in Congress to extend the time to sell TikTok. And in my view is it gets done, but it's really close. Can I ask you, I've only got about 90 seconds, Paul. I mean, it's just, it's utterly fascinating how the world has changed so quickly and what the kinds of things we're watching and talking about. What are you watching over the next two to three weeks that you think is something we need to keep our eye on? I'd say a couple of things. One is, is President Trump going to soften up on the big antitrust lawsuit against Google? That has been pretty front burner for Google investors the last couple of years, especially as the DOJ rolled out remedies, the kind of remedies they want Google to change as a, as a matter of business model. Um, the other thing, and I think it's a little bit underappreciated, is Uber and DoorDash and Lyft and those companies, uh, you would normally expect under a Republican president to be pretty fine in terms of regulation, like no regulation, basically. But President Trump has nominated a woman to run the Labor Department, and she is very pro-worker and pro-union. Uh, and I think President Trump did this as sort of a political payback to, to a union that supported him. But the woman he's nominated is is a bit of a risk for Uber, because if she had her way, she might sue one of these gig companies to force them to treat their drivers like employees. And that's a very different business model for the gig companies than, than what they're doing today.